Now in the ACT math question, most students spend their time and energy focused on the content. Now I get that. It's about knowing what you do and what you don't. But I will tell you, most of the time, we find that students have more of a problem with how to start a question. And I don't know if you relate to this at all, but we've got a ton of students who do really well in their math classes, but when they get to a question, they're not sure what the next step is. So for the next few questions, we're gonna focus more so on the strategy and the approach based on the information you have. And as for the content, listen, don't worry if we cover something that you're not familiar with. We're gonna review a little bit of it so you can take it to go and practice it afterwards. But also, here's a tip. Make a content cheat sheet. Write down all the things that you know you'll need to memorize by test day and use it. Practice with it, do questions with it. As you do more and more questions, you'll find that over time, you'll need that sheet less and less. And by test day, you won't need it at all. So let's jump into it and see how we can take the first steps to solving a problem. Now, in any math question, the first step you always wanna take is to identify what it is they're actually asking you to solve for. That's gonna help you focus. And I'll tell you, uh, it doesn't matter how good you are at the math, if you get the right answer to the wrong question, well, it's gonna be wrong. And so you really wanna make sure you identify what it is you're solving for. Next up, since we are solving for these two angles, well, look at the information provided and transfer it to see what will help us get to these angle measures. Uh, and if you don't have a figure, always redraw it because having that visual representation will help you. Uh, we know that point F lies on line segment AE, which means if AFC is a 90 degree angle, well, CFE must also be a 90 degree angle because two angles that are on the line segment are gonna be supplementary. They're gonna add up to 180 degrees. And well, that means that these two angles here, EFD, uh, well, DFE, the one we're looking for, and the angle next to it are complementary. They add up to 90 degrees, which means this angle measure we can write as 90 minus 43. Since we know what the angle next to it is equal to, we can find the measure of this angle, uh, which is, well, if we do this math, it's 47 degrees. Uh, great. And then we know from the problem that BFC, the other angle we're looking for, is congruent to CFD. And so if CFD is 43 and BFC is 43, they're equal. Well, now we have the two angle measures we need to sum up to get to our answer. We know that 43 plus 47 is equal to 90. That's our answer. Answer choice J. Now, if you haven't seen lines and angles in a while, let's go over some of the angle types that you'll need to review and be on the lookout for. These are the most common. This first one is an acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees. Next one is a right angle. It's equal to 90 degrees. Then we've got obtuse, which is greater than 90, but not greater than 180, which is a straight line. And then we've got three angles that add up to a straight line. They all add up to 180 degrees. We'll come back to this in a little bit. And then we've got an intersection where you've got vertical angles. Vertical angles are essentially angles that are opposite from one another in an intersection like this one, and they are going to be equal. Just like you see here, A is equal to C, B is equal to D. Now let's review two words that I, two terminology words that I used in the previous question. The first is, if I have angles that add up to 90 degrees, those angles are complementary. And then if I have angles that add up to 180, like the straight one we see in this example, the angles are going to be supplementary. Now, don't worry if you don't know this right now, just put it in your content cheat sheet, review it, and as you use it in questions, you'll see that you get more and more comfortable as you go on. Here, we have another geometry question, 
And if trapezoids are on your jam, I hope you didn't panic because actually we don't need to know that this is a trapezoid in order to solve this question. Well, what do we need to know? Always start with what they're looking for, which here in this case is the measure of angle C. Now, AB is parallel to DC and well, angle C is created when transversal BC cuts through these two parallel lines. Now we'll go over this in a minute, but if you do remember, if you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, that means that the alternate interior angles will be equal to each other. Now what that means for us, well, it's great news because angle C and the angle next to it form a straight line, which means, well, if you remember from the problem before, that C plus 85 are supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. So last step, if I subtract 85 from both sides, well, that's gonna tell me that C is equal to 95 degrees or answer choice B. Now, anytime you have a problem, always identify first what you're solving for, then transfer the information you need in order to get the information that helps you get to your answer. Let's quickly review what we need to know about parallel lines and transversals. In the problem before, we saw that alternate interior angles were equal when a transversal went through two parallel lines. In fact, it gets better than that because actually when you have parallel lines cut by a transversal, all the obtuse angles are going to be equal to each other. And likewise, all the acute angles will be equal to each other as well. So you can see how parallel lines can provide a ton of information that will help you get to an answer. So keep an eye out for it and always look to see how you can transfer information. Here, we had a word problem. And if you're anything like me, word problems can drive you crazy sometimes. So I had to make sure we at least covered one. But like every problem, always start with what they're asking for, which is the percent of money that Adam received. Now, that percent of money that Adam received is going to be equal to the percent of time that he worked. Now I know that, well, the problem tells us they agree to divide the money in the same proportion as time spent. Now, uh, time or money, either way, that's gonna be a part over whole relationship. And we know that the total amount of time was 80 minutes. So really what I need to find out is how many minutes did Adam work? Let's call that variable A. If I can find A, I can find the percent of time he worked, which is equal to the percent of money he received. Well, I know that there are three lawnmowers here. I've got Adam, I've got Brenda, and I've got Nemai. Add it up, they work together a total of 80 minutes. Now the problem here is that I've got three variables and I only need to solve for variable A. Thankfully, I've got more information that I can use here and transfer as necessary to get what A is equal to, I know that Brenda mowed five minutes longer than A. So I can replace B with A plus five. I also know that the Mai mowed 15 minutes less than Adam. So N can be replaced with A minus 15. Now add that all up and they still equal 80 minutes. And so uh, if I combine like terms, I've got three A, and the five and the 15 means I've got minus 10 is equal to 80. Now we can solve for A, we've only got one variable. I add 10 to both sides. That gives me three A is equal to 90. Divide both sides by three and A is equal to 30. We're not done yet. I'm glad we took the step to figure out, hey, what is it we're actually looking for? But now that I know A, I can plug that back in to my initial equation. And so 30 over 80, you can plug that right into your calculator, is 0.375, which is equal to, in terms of percent, 37.5% or answer choice J. Great work. We definitely use a lot of algebra in that last question. 
But one type of equation I definitely want you to look out for is an equation like percents where you've got three parts. Uh, we were looking for the percent and we had the whole. So we could know that by finding the part, we'd be able to solve for the answer that we're looking for. This is called a three part equation and it's commonly used in a lot of ACT math questions. So definitely use that logic to help you figure out what the next steps are. Also, be as flexible as you can and practice this moving from fractions to decimals to percents. Having that flexibility will help you move more quickly when transferring one piece of information to another in order to get your answer. So just remember, anytime you're dealing with an ACT math question, to always start by looking for what the question is asking you to solve. Then take a look at all the information you have and put it into the form that you need it to be in to be able to get to your answer. Then and only then do you choose your approach. Don't just do straightforward math every time. Think about how you can move some of that information around to be able to solve for whatever it is they're asking for. And finally, confirm your answer and make sure you've solved for the right thing. Now, one last thing I'll tell you before we move on to our next topic is, look, anytime you get something wrong, don't just throw it away. That's how we learn. Save up all the questions you got wrong, review them, and then I'll challenge you after you've kind of forgotten about them, do those questions again. That's going to show you how much you've grown and how much you can continue to learn from your mistakes in order to crush it on the ACT math.